Here are 30 most commonly asked interview questions for data architect positions, along with detailed answers. 1. What is a data architect, and what are their responsibilities? Answer. Data architects are responsible for designing, creating, deploying, and managing an organization's data architecture. They ensure that the data architecture aligns with the organization's goals and objectives, while meeting requirements for scalability, security, and performance. Responsibilities include designing data models, developing data strategies, overseeing data integration processes, optimizing data storage and retrieval, and ensuring data governance and compliance. 2. What are the key skills and qualities required for a data architect role? Answer. Key skills and qualities for a data architect include a strong understanding of database management systems DBMs, proficiency in data modeling and schema design, knowledge of data warehousing and ETL processes, expertise in Skull and other query languages, familiarity with big data technologies such as Hadoop, Spark, Proficiency in data visualization tools like Tableau, Power BI, Excellent Problem, Solving and Analytical Skills, Strong Communication and Collaboration Abilities, and a deep understanding of business requirements and objectives. 3. Can you explain the difference between a data architect, data engineer, and data scientist? Answer. Data architect focuses on designing and implementing data architecture, ensuring that data solutions align with business goals and requirements. Data engineer focuses on building and maintaining data pipelines, data warehouses and data lakes, handling, data ingestion, transformation, and storage. Data scientist focuses on analyzing large data sets, using statistical and machine learning techniques to extract insights and make data-driven decisions. 4. What are the common challenges faced by data architects, and how do you address them? Answer. Common challenges include managing data complexity, ensuring data quality and integrity, dealing with evolving business requirements, integrating disparate data sources, ensuring scalability and performance addressing security and compliance concerns, and keeping up with emerging technologies. These challenges can be addressed through comprehensive data governance practices, robust data modeling techniques, effective collaboration with stakeholders, leveraging automation and AI technologies, and continuous learning and adaptation. 5. How do you approach designing a data architecture for a new project or system? Answer. The approach involves understanding business requirements, analyzing data sources and formats, identifying key stakeholders and their needs, defining data entities and relationships, choosing appropriate data storage technologies and architectures, relational databases, NOSQL databases, data lakes, designing data pipelines for data ingestion, transformation, and storage. Ensuring scalability, performance, security, and compliance, and documenting the architecture for future reference and maintenance. 6. What is data modeling, and why is it important in data architecture? Answer. Data modeling is the process of creating a visual representation of the data structure, including entities, attributes, relationships, and constraints. It is important in data architecture because it helps to understand and define the structure of the data, facilitates communication between stakeholders, ensures data consistency and integrity, guides database design and development efforts, supports data governance and compliance, and provides a blueprint for implementing and maintaining data solutions. 7. Can you explain the difference between relational and non-relational NOSQL databases? Answer. Relational database. Organize data into tables with rows and columns, enforce a predefined schema, support ACID transactions, and use Skull for querying and manipulation, for example, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle. Non-relational databases NOSQL. Store data in flexible, schema-less formats, for example, 
key value pairs, documents, graphs, scale horizontally, provide high availability and partition tolerance, and support eventual consistency. For example, MongoDB, Cassandra, Neo, for J. 8. How do you ensure data security and privacy in a data architecture? Answer. Data security and privacy are ensured through various measures such as implementing access controls authentication, authorization, encrypting data at rest and in transit, masking sensitive information, monitoring and auditing data access and usage, complying with relevant regulations for example, GDPR, HIPAA, conducting regular security assessments and audits and fostering a culture of data security awareness among employees. 9. What is ETL, and why is it important in data architecture? Answer. TL Extract, Transform, Load is a process for extracting data from various sources, transforming it into a consistent format, and loading it into a target database or data warehouse. It is important in data architecture because it enables data integration and consolidation from disparate sources, ensures data quality and consistency, supports business intelligence and analytics, facilitates decision making, and provides a foundation for data-driven insights and innovation. 10. How do you approach data governance and data quality management in a data architecture? Answer. Approach involves establishing data governance policies, standards, and processes, defining roles and responsibilities for data stewardship and management, implementing data quality controls data profiling, cleansing, validation, conducting data lineage and impact analysis, ensuring compliance with regulations and industry standards, fostering a culture of data ownership and accountability and continuously monitoring and improving data quality and governance practices. 11. What are the advantages and disadvantages of cloud-based data architectures? Answer. Advantages include scalability, flexibility, cost-effectiveness, rapid provisioning, high availability, and disaster recovery. Disadvantages include potential security and privacy concerns dependency on internet connectivity, data transfer costs, vendor lock-in, and compliance challenges, for example, data sovereignty. 12. How do you ensure scalability and performance in a data architecture? Answer. Ensure scalability and performance through techniques such as horizontal scaling adding more nodes or servers, vertical scaling increasing resources on existing nodes, partitioning or sharding data across multiple servers, optimizing queries and indexes, catching frequently accessed data, using distributed computing frameworks for example, Hadoop, Spark, and monitoring system performance and capacity regularly. 13. What is data warehousing, and how does it fit into a data architecture? Answer. Data rusing is the process of collecting, storing, and managing data from various sources to support decision-making and business intelligence activities. It fits into a data architecture as a centralized repository for structured and curated data, enabling data analysis, reporting, and visualization across the organization. 14. Can you explain the concept of data lake and its role in data architecture? Answer. A data lake is a centralized repository that stores raw, unstructured, and semi-structured data at scale. It serves as a cost-effective solution for storing and analyzing diverse data types, for example, text, images, logs, without requiring upfront schema definition. In a data architecture, a data lake complements data warehouses by providing a flexible and scalable platform for data exploration, experimentation, and advanced analytics. 15. How do you approach data migration in a data architecture? Answer. Approach involves assessing existing data sources and target systems, defining migration requirements and success criteria, selecting appropriate migration tools and techniques, for example, ETL, processes, replication, 
APIs, ensuring data consistency and integrity throughout the migration process, conducting thorough testing and validation, coordinating with stakeholders and monitoring performance and resolving issues during and after migration. 16. What are the best practices for designing a data architecture for real-time analytics? Answer. Best practices include leveraging streaming data technologies, for example, Apache Kafka, Apache Flink. Designing event-driven architectures, implementing microservices for real-time data processing and analysis. Ensuring low-latency data ingestion and processing, optimizing data storage and retrieval adopting scalable and fault-tolerant systems, and integrating real-time analytics with existing data pipelines and workflows. 17. How do you approach data integration in a heterogeneous data environment? Answer. Approach involves understanding data sources and formats, defining integration requirements and objectives, selecting appropriate integration patterns, for example, batch processing, real-time streaming, message queuing, implementing data transformation and mapping logic, ensuring data quality and consistency, resolving schema conflicts and data format mismatches, conducting thorough testing and validation, and monitoring integration processes for performance and reliability. AT. Can you explain the concept of Master Data Management MDM and its role in data architecture? Answer. Master Data Management MDM is the process of creating and managing a single, consistent, and accurate view of master data entities, for example, customers, products, employees across an organization. It plays a crucial role in data architecture by ensuring data consistency, integrity, and quality reducing data duplication and redundancy, facilitating data governance and compliance, and enabling better decision-making and business insights. 19. How do you ensure data lineage and traceability in a data architecture? Answer. Ensure data lineage and traceability through metadata management, documenting data flows and transformations. Capturing lineage information at each stage of data processing, implementing data lineage tools and solutions. Establishing data quality and governance processes, conducting regular audits and reviews. And providing transparency and visibility into data lineage for stakeholders and regulators. 20. What are the considerations for designing a data architecture for regulatory compliance? For example, GDPR. HIPAA? Answer. Consideration cycle ensuring data security and privacy. Implementing access controls and encryption, auditing and monitoring data access and usage. Documenting data processing activities and consent mechanisms. Establishing data retention and deletion policies. Conducting impact assessments. Providing data subject rights, for example, access, rectification, erasure and collaborating with legal and compliance teams to ensure alignment with regulatory requirements. 21. How do you approach data visualization and reporting in a data architecture? Answer. Approach involves identifying reporting requirements and key performance indicators KPIs. Selecting appropriate visualization tools and techniques, for example, dashboards, charts, graphs. Designing intuitive and interactive user interfaces. Integrating data visualization with analytics and business intelligence platforms. Ensuring data accuracy and consistency, and empowering users to derive insights and make data-driven decisions. 22. Can you explain the concept of data federation and its role in data architecture? Answer. Data federation is the process of integrating data from multiple sources in real time or near real time without physically consolidating the data into a single repository. It plays a role in data architecture by enabling virtual integration of disparate data sources, providing unified access to distributed data, reducing data duplication and latency, and supporting agile and flexible data consumption and analysis. 
23. What are the challenges and best practices for managing and structured data in a data architecture? Answer. Challenges include extracting meaning and value from unstructured data, for example, text, images, videos. Ensuring data quality and consistency, managing data volume and velocity, addressing scalability and performance issues, and integrating unstructured data with structured data for analysis. Best practices include implementing text mining and natural language processing techniques, leveraging machine learning for content analysis and classification, using distributed storage and processing technologies, and adopting metadata management and indexing strategies. 24. How do you approach data backup and disaster recovery planning in a data architecture? Answer. Approach involves identifying critical data assets and systems. Defining backup and recovery objectives and strategies, for example, full backups, incremental backups, off-site backups. Implementing automated backup processes and schedules. Testing backup and recovery procedures regularly. Establishing recovery point objectives, RPOs, and recovery time objectives, TOROs. Ensuring data integrity and consistency. And documenting and communicating disaster recovery plans to stakeholders. 25. Can you explain the concept of data virtualization and its role in data architecture? Answer. Data virtualization is the process of abstracting and presenting data from multiple sources as a unified, logical view without physically moving or replicating the data. It plays a role in data architecture by providing a layer of abstraction between data consumers and underlying data sources, enabling real-time access to distributed data, reducing data duplication and complexity and supporting agile and flexible data integration and analysis. 26. What are the considerations for designing a data architecture for machine learning and AI applications? Answer. Considerations equal data quality and integrity, feature engineering and selection, model training and evaluation. Scalability and performance of data processing pipelines, interpretability, and explainability of models. Deployment and monitoring of ML models in production environments, regulatory compliance for example GDPR, bias and fairness, and collaboration between data scientists, engineers, and domain experts. 27. How do you approach data lifecycle management in a data architecture? Answer. Approach involves defining data lifecycle stages, for example, creation, storage, usage, archival, deletion, establishing data retention policies and schedules, implementing data classification and tagging mechanisms, automating data lifecycle management processes, for example, data expiration, purging, ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements and business policies, and optimizing storage and processing costs. 28. What are the considerations for designing a data architecture for IAT Internet of Things applications? Answer. Consideration sickle data ingestion and processing at scale, real-time data streaming and analysis, device connectivity and interoperability, edge computing and fog computing architectures, security and privacy of sensor data, data latency and bandwidth constraints, data integration with existing systems and workflows, and compliance with industry standards and regulations, for example ISO or EEC 27000 series, NIST cybersecurity framework. 29. How do you approach data privacy by design and default in a data architecture? Answer. Approach involves integrating privacy principles, for example, minimization, purpose limitation, transparency, accountability, into the design and implementation of data systems and processes, conducting privacy impact assessments, implementing privacy enhancing technologies pets, such as anonymization, pseudonymization, and differential privacy. Adopting privacy-preserving architectures, for example, zero-trust architecture, decentralized identity, 
and promoting a privacy-aware culture across the organization. 30. How do you stay updated with the latest trends and technologies in data architecture? Answer. Stay updated by attending conferences, workshops, and webinars, participating in professional networking events and forums, reading industry publications and blogs, following thought leaders and experts on social media, enrolling in online courses and certifications, experimenting with new tools and technologies through personal projects or proof of concepts, joining user groups and meetups, and collaborating with colleagues and peers to share knowledge and best practices. In conclusion, a data architect plays a vital role in designing and managing data architecture to meet the needs of modern organizations. They navigate complex challenges such as data integration, security, scalability, and compliance, while leveraging a diverse toolkit of skills and technologies. By staying abreast of industry trends and best practices, data architects ensure that data remains a strategic asset, driving informed decision-making and innovation within the organization. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.